A New Lease of Death by Ruth Rendell Read by George Baker It was five in the morning. Inspector Burden had seen more dawns than most men, but he had never become jaundiced by them, especially summer dawns. He liked the stillness, the blue light that was the same as the light at dusk, but without dusk's melancholy. The two men they had been questioning about last night's fight in one of the King's Markham cafes had confessed. Now they were locked in the cells, and Burden stood by the window in Wexford's office, tired and a little sickened. He opened the window to get rid of the sweaty smell of youths who wore leather jackets in the height of summer. Outside in the corridor, he could hear Wexford saying good night, or good morning, to Colonel Griswold, the chief constable. Burden wondered if Griswold had guessed when he arrived just before ten, with a long spiel about stamping out hooliganism, that he was in for an all-night session. That, he thought unfairly, was where meddling got you. The heavy door clanged, and Griswold's car started. Burden watched it move off the forecourt, past the great stone urns filled with pink geraniums, and into King's Markham's High Street. He turned when Wexford came in. The chief inspector's heavy face was a little greyer than usual, but his eyes, dark and hard as basalt, showed a gleam of triumph. He was a big man, with big features and big, intimidating voice. "'Another job jobbed,' he said, as the old woman said when she jabbed the old man's eye out. Burden bore such vulgarisms stoically. He made his thin lips crease into a tight smile as Wexford showed him an envelope. "'Griswold's just given me this. At five in the morning. No sense of timing.' Burden glanced at the Essex postmark. Is that the man he was on about earlier, sir? Yes, Mike. This is the Reverend Archery, all right. Taking advantage of the old Pals Act? He lowered himself into a chair, his face squeezed into a snarling grin. A very good friend of mine, Griswold said. Excellent fellow. One of the best. I'd like you to give him all help you can. It's to do with that scoundrel painter. Who's painter? Villain who got the chop fifteen years ago said Wexford laconically. Let's see what the parson has to say, shall we? Burden looked over his shoulder. The letter was headed, St. Columbus Vicarage, Thringford, Essex. Wexford read it aloud. Dear sir, I hope you will forgive me for taking up your valuable time, but I regard this matter as being of some urgency, and Colonel Griswold has very kindly told me that you are the gentleman who may be able to assist me. You will remember the case of Herbert Arthur Painter. Sample complete. Ready to continue?